Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, June 5th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. I mentioned yesterday that the message that the Lord gave to Jeremiah to proclaim to the people of Judah was not going to be an easy message or a popular message. We see that right from the start of uh, Jeremiah's preaching in Jeremiah chapter 2, as he confronts the people of Judah, not only with the harsh reality of their falling away from the Lord, but also the consequences that will come upon them because of their apostasy. The word of the Lord came to me, go and announce directly to Jerusalem that this is what the Lord says. I remember the loyalty of your youth, your love as a bride, how you followed me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who ate of it found themselves guilty. Disaster came on them. This is the Lord's declaration. Hear the word of the Lord, house of Jacob and all families of the house of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your ancestors find in me, that they went so far from me, followed worthless idols, and became worthless themselves? They stopped asking, where is the Lord who brought us from the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and ravines, through a land of droughts and darkness, a land no one traveled through and where no one lived? I brought you to a fertile land to eat its fruit and bounty. But after you entered, you defiled my land. You made my inheritance detestable. The priests quit asking, where is the Lord? The experts in the law no longer knew me, and the rulers rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and followed useless idols. Therefore, I will bring a case against you again. This is the Lord's declaration. I will bring a case against your children's children. Cross over to the coasts of Cyprus and take a look. Send someone to Kedar and consider carefully. See if there has ever been anything like this. Has a nation ever exchanged its gods? But they were not gods. Yet my people have exchanged their glory for useless idols. Be appalled at this, heavens. Be shocked and utterly desolated. This is the Lord's declaration. For my people have committed a double evil. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and dug cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that cannot hold water. Is Israel a slave? Was he born into slavery? Why else has he become a prey? The young lions have roared at him. They have roared loudly. They have laid waste his land. His cities are in ruins without inhabitants. The men of Memphis and Tapanis have also broken your skull. Have you not brought this on yourself by abandoning the Lord your God while he was leading you along the way? Now what will you gain by traveling along the way to Egypt to drink the water of the Nile? What will you gain by traveling, traveling along the way to Assyria to drink the water of the Euphrates? Your own evil will discipline you. Your own apostasies will reprimand you. To recognize how evil and bitter it is for you to abandon the Lord your God and to have no fear of me. This is the declaration of the Lord God of armies. For long ago, I broke your yoke. I tore off your chains. You insisted, I will not serve. On every high hill and under every green tree, you lay down like a prostitute. I planted you, a choice vine from the very best seed. How then could you turn into a degenerate foreign vine? Even if you wash with lye and use a great amount of bleach, the stain of your iniquity is still in front of me. This is the Lord's God's declaration. How can you protest, I am not defiled? I have not followed the bales. Look at your behavior in the valley. Acknowledge what you have done. You are a swift young camel twisting and turning on her way. 
a wild donkey at home in the wilderness. She sniffs the wind and the heat of her desire. Who can control her passions? All who look for her will not become weary. They will find her in her mating season. Keep your feet from going bare and your throat from thirst. But you say, it's hopeless. I love strangers and I will continue to follow them. Like the shame of a thief when he is caught, so the house of Israel has been put to shame. They, their kings, their officials, their priests, and their prophets say to a tree, you are my father. And to a stone, you gave birth to me. They have turned their back to me and not their face. Yet in the time of disaster, they beg, rise up and save us. But where are your gods you made for yourselves? Let them rise up and save you in your time of disaster, if they can. For your gods are as numerous as your cities, Judah. Why do you bring a case against me? All of you have rebelled against me. This is the Lord's declaration. I have struck down your children in vain. They would not accept discipline. Your own sword has devoured your prophets like a ravaging lion. Evil generation, pay attention to the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of dense darkness? Why do my people claim we will go where we want and we will no longer come to you? Can a young woman forget her jewelry or a bride her wedding sash? Yet my people have forgotten me for countless days. How skillfully you pursue love. You also teach evil women your ways. Moreover, your skirts are stained with the blood of the innocent poor. You do not catch them breaking and entering. But in spite of all these things, you claim I am innocent. His anger is sure to turn away from me. But I will certainly judge you because you have said, I have not sinned. How unstable you are, constantly changing your ways. You will be put to shame by Egypt, just as you were put to shame by Assyria. Moreover, you will be led out from here with your hands on your head, since the Lord has rejected those you trust. You will not succeed, even with their help. As we turn to Matthew chapter 16, we are going to hear uh, Simon Peter give a beautiful confession of faith in Jesus. And then Jesus is going to reveal some more details about what his work as the Messiah involves and what following him involves. The Pharisees and Sadducees approached and tested him, asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, when evening comes, you say, it will be good weather because the sky is red. And in the morning, today will be stormy because the sky is red and threatening. You know how to read the appearance of the sky. But you can't read the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation demands a sign. But no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Then he left them and went away. The disciples reached the other shore, and they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus told them, watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They were discussing among themselves, we didn't bring any bread. Aware of this, Jesus said, you have little faith. Why are you discussing among yourselves that you do not have bread? Don't you understand yet? Don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you collected? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many large baskets you collected? Why is it you don't understand that when I told you, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, it wasn't about bread? Then they understood that he had not told them to beware of the leaven in bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he asked them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. 
Simon respond, or Jesus responded, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples orders to tell no one that he was the Messiah. From then on, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, be killed, and be raised on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Oh no, Lord, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned and told Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me because you're not thinking about God's concerns, but human concerns. Then he said to his disciples, If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will find it. For what will it benefit someone if he gains the whole world, yet loses his soul? Or what will anyone give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will reward each according to what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.